A very intelligent female titan. A very intelligent female titan with very creative ways of killing soldiers. Like the rope spin. <laughs> Which I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Great moment. This trap thing is crazy. Are we going to see more of Erwin's perspective this episode maybe? I've been thinking about that moment. I don't really know what to make of it. Like Levi tells Erwin that they couldn't have made it without the soldier's sacrifice. And he's just like, is that so? <laughs> it seems like Levi is trying to get something from Erwin or give him information that he wants or something. There's like a request somewhere in there for Levi, it feels like to me. And Erwin's reaction is cold, but I don't think that reveals anything about his feelings. I don't think he takes it for granted. I just think it's probably an inevitability for him at this point that he's accepted. Erwin Smith! There we go, 57th Expedition Beyond the Walls Part 4. How many do they have? Meanwhile, Goddess Krista. Everyone likes her. That's the sound of a million little strings firing. Yeah, that's a good point. They brought these things with them, right? Maybe they always bring them to capture Titans. Chris doesn't hide demand recently. Connie's like that kid in school who never takes anything seriously and gets bad grades and always seems to be in trouble, but everybody loves anyway. <laughs> and who every now and then does something amazing and just becomes incredibly popular. He's like the sleeper popular one. Kind of under the radar, but like does really well. You know what I mean? That is not good. I feel like Armin already knew that. That's my feeling as well. Yeah, he's keeping things very close to the chest, and he's like sending out mixed messages to different people, like Aaron's location. Who do you think the real enemy is? I like how their reactions to that idea show a lot about their personalities. Like, Uloa is someone who thinks really highly of himself, or wants to think really highly of himself, and so the idea that he's not valued is going to hurt him deeper. Whereas Petra is all about faith and trust, and so it doesn't rattle her about her opinion about herself, it just bothers her that Aaron would question their faith in each other. The old guard. Wait, who are the five? Got it. So there's definitely an inner ring among the survey corps. Someone did, so there's a bad actor somewhere in there. Yeah, this scene. Now that I think about it, I think the running gag of him biting his tongue is a joke, just because he's the one who should talk the least, but talks the most. He needs to bite his tongue more, in other words. Also, Levi doesn't even talk like that. Yeah, exactly. What the hell? What kind of move is that? That is so true. I'm starting to see a trend here with John John. He's thought a lot about leadership. And in the last few episodes, he seems to be one of the people that's had the biggest problem with leadership. And that can't be a coincidence. So I'm wondering if, like, that isn't a route for him. Him becoming dissatisfied and aiming for leadership. But I have to agree with Armin. John John is sort of being, uh, you know, an armchair quarterback here. It's really easy to judge the plan after the fact. And also, he has less information than Erwin does. So he's probably thinking with limited information. And the choice initially to me seems cold or wrong. Like there's something wrong about like sacrificing people. But I think what kind of redeems Erwin in this case is that he never lied to anybody about what the job was. I feel like he's been very upfront that this is a possibility, like that they're just going to get wiped out. Anyone who joins the Survey Corps knows their history. It is sort of sickening to think of somebody having the power over other people's lives like that. But I think the more the choice rested in the hands of the individual soldiers in terms of like what they would give their lives for, the more understandable it is. You know what I mean? Interesting. 
人間性をも捨て去ることができる人のことだ何も捨てることができない人には何も変えることはできないだろう Armin's got some strong feelings. I think Armin's right. I just think that's a step too far, and there's also like a danger in that. Just generally speaking, I think there are very few good things that come without sacrifice. Like on the individual level, a lot of people talk about who they want to be and what they want and things like that, but they don't accept the bargain, which is that in order to pursue those visions that they have, they have to give up what they have now. You know, like you can't be someone greater unless you're willing to sacrifice what you are. But at the same time, I think there have to be parameters on that, right? Like you have to have certain core things that you will not sacrifice. Because if you go far enough down that road, you end up being no better than the things you're fighting. I mean, this is Titans, right? So it's not a great example. But like in life, you don't want to become the evil in order to defeat the evil because that is sort of pointless. There's no winning there, at least from a broader perspective in terms of like humanity and the world and society, right? Like it, it just perpetuates the same things. I think if you're aiming for an ideal, you want to win while staying true to things that you believe, which Erwin seems to be doing. I just think he's walking a line. Like there's a fine line. Oh, what? She has ultimate armor? She's a homunculi. Levi's just talking calmly to this giant female titan. Yeah, we all want to know who you are, so just stop fighting. Oh my god, that is so true. You have no idea, Levi. She spun this guy around like a yo yo. It was traumatic. Seems like it. Seems like she really enjoyed it. She looks sad. Is she trying to speak? Hey! <laughs> hey! Damn it. Big shit, I can't. What if she was trying to express something really important, you know? What if she's trying to convey something to Levi but is unable to? Oh, she just called the Titans. Trying to do your job. Yeah, they have a mission. They've been called. Oh, damn! Levi. Oh, they're trying to free her. Well, this is what they do best. There's just so many of them. Damn, that hurts after all that. Damn it, I want to know who it is. Are they rescuing her or like eating her? Speaking of sacrifice. They are eating her. Wow. God, that hurts because that means everybody died in vain, basically. So earlier, Armin was talking about sacrifice and how Erwin was ready to sacrifice to win. And this came back here because the Titans were ready to sacrifice more. This female Titan was ready to just die, basically, which is loss, right? At least it seems that way. Who knows what's really happening? Like, maybe it's not actually a death for whatever this thing is, but Erwin can't go as far. And maybe Erwin would have been willing to sacrifice his soldiers if he thought they had a chance of winning, but he's forced to weigh things more carefully than this Titan who's just willing to dispose of herself. Also, it's somewhat amazing to me that Erwin had the fortitude to order the withdrawal. Just because so much was lost, I feel like most people in that situation would be unable to face that and would double down. When things start going really wrong, it's easy to start lying to yourself that you should just keep going because going back or reversing means you have to face your failure and everything you've lost. But I think it's a sign of maturity that he can keep a level head like that and still weigh the situation as accurately as he can, given the implications of what just happened. <laughs> Does he think Levi's gonna be out for a while? Longer than he thinks? Haha, <laughs> Connie. 
あの時私たちを選んだから今の結果がある I hope they actually can find something in there 最初は生きて帰ってくりゃ上出来かもな I like how that's success just living いいかが緊張お家に帰るまでが壁外遠征だからなオルオペトラお前ら二人とも初陣でションベン漏らして泣いてたくせに立派になったもんだな <laughs> you just added yourself. What is it with this crew and like pissing their pants? Where there's also assists and rebounds. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? Wait, 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 wait. I'm a little bit lost here. <laughs> so whoever was inside the Titan escaped. So there is a traitor, very directly in the Survey Corps. Somebody really doesn't want this to happen. You know what just came to mind? I wonder if this is connected to Eren's gear malfunctioning during training. If there's been someone on the inside ever since the wall fell, I mean, they could have been operating this whole time, and you can imagine why they wouldn't want Eren being a part of this. That was a pretty good setup, having that look like Levi, but not be. It's crazy to think of them having battles with humans using maneuver gear. Ah, oh, man, it sucks that he dies a human death. Gunther. He was a good leader, too. <gasps> Damn it. Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> the show does such a great job setting you up, just in general. Like, every time you think something's going right, it's not. It's about to get worse. This was a really enjoyable episode, but a really painful one, too. Because, like, there was all that talk about sacrifice, right? Sacrifice for your beliefs. Have faith in the survey corpses. Do your part and win a victory. And we were almost there. Like, everybody did their part and they died heroically. And then it was all for nothing, it seems. The only takeaway, I guess, which you can see being beneficial long term, is they flushed out the spy to an extent. Like, now there's no doubt that there's a human spy in their ranks. Which justifies all of Erwin's beliefs and makes him look even cooler somehow. Even though I think I might be coming to this conclusion based on red herrings they're purposely leaving, it really does seem like it's Mikasa. I mean, the Titan just looked like her. But also, we've seen Mikasa be confused for Levi a lot, and they thought that was Levi. It looked like Levi. And whoever it is is obviously very talented, which Mikasa is. The only thing that's really weird about that is that she's there. Like, we see her. She's with uh, the other commander or whoever he is. So how could she be in both places at once? And also, it could be that they're trying to make it obvious that it's Mikasa because it's not. But who else could it be? I mean, everyone is here, right? Who's not here? Annie? It's not Annie. Is it Annie? <laughs> She's blonde. And also Annie would not be able to disguise herself as a survey corpse. Who do we not see? I mean, there's so many characters. I'm sure there have been plenty of clues that I've missed. I was really hoping for answers about who it was this episode, but that's just not, not how it works. I gotta say that overall, this expedition is my favorite part of the series so far. It's so exciting and there's so much cool character stuff going on. I feel like things really picked up once Eren joined this crew. They themselves are more interesting to me overall than the cadets, but having the cadets with them rounds the whole thing out. And it just gets more intriguing by the minute. Not knowing who the enemy is or what their goal is is really exciting, since I have faith that there are answers. If I didn't have faith in that, it would be kind of infuriating. But my feeling now is I just can't wait to watch more and find out what's going on. But that's gonna do it for episode 20. I'll see you guys next time for episode 21 when who knows what's gonna happen now.